now we are going to see the grashof's condition or the grashof's law now here one four bar mechanism the four links are there a b b c c d and d a these are the four links now what grashof's law states before that see s yes, it stands for length of the shortest string l it stands for the length of the longest link p that is the length of the remaining one link and the q the length of the another remaining link so according to the grashof's law what is said the length of the shortest link plus length of the longest link its addition it should be less than or equal to the length of the addition of the remaining two link s plus l it should be less than equal to p plus q so this is the grashof's condition now why this grashof's condition should satisfy we will see the first case when s plus l is less than p plus q in figure 1 here the link it is Uh, frame it is fixed the crank this is the follower and this is the connecting that is the coupler we can say so when the law it satisfies s plus l less than p plus q that is the shaft law at that time at least one of the link it will get the rotary motion and other it will just oscillate now again see in the second inversion here the opposite link that is the coupler it is fixed in this case And again, the crank it is having the rotary motion, and the follower it is just oscillating up to this center. Now again, in the third case, we are fixing the crank. In that case, the coupler and the frame, these two link, this coupler it is rotating about this center, and it is having the rotary motion. And again, this the frame at this center it is rotating here. the two links getting the rotary motion now again in fourth case the follower it is fixed and here the crank it will get the rotary motion now it will oscillate this is also oscillate while oscillating these two it will rotate about its center its own center it will rotate so means if it satisfies s plus l less than p plus q means at least one of the link in this mechanism will get the rotary motion which is the basis for all the mechanism because most of the cases we are using prime mover as an electric motor and the electric motor it is having the rotary motion to utilize that we should have one of the link rotary motion so that's why it will satisfy this grashof's law now in this video we will come to know how the law is satisfied for most part in this course we will be studying mechanisms with four links connected in a loop now this might seem awfully simple to keep anyone busy for a complete semester but believe me the variation of motion that it offers with just simple changes in pairs of link lengths is simply mind boggling So here is the simplest of its kind four links 1 2 3 4 connected with revolute pairs here 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 and here okay. forming what is called as a four bar mechanism and we are going to learn a test that tells if this mechanism will have a link capable of complete rotation now why are we so concerned about having a link that completely rotates because such a link can then be connected to an electric motor or in olden days say a steam engine or a internal combustion engine and uh, the whole mechanism can then be driven automatically the condition we are going to study is called grashof's criteria it says if the sum of the shortest and the longest link lengths is less then the sum of the remaining two link lengths then we should have a crank in our four bar mechanism 
Here is one such mechanism. Let us test it. So the shortest link and the longest link add up to 30 plus 80 equal to 110. And the other two links, 50 plus 70, add up to 120. So Krashoff's criteria says we should have a crank here. So let's test by actually dragging on one of the links here, the shortest link. And indeed, it is capable of complete rotation. It is not even necessary that uh, the shortest and the longest link should be one next to the other as over here. We can as well have them on opposite sides. So for the link lengths satisfy Grashoff's criteria, we will have a crank. Now here we are not getting a crank. Why could that be? Let's see. 35 and 90 add up to 125 while 50 plus 70 is only 120. So, Krashoff's criteria is violated. So, the mechanism gets locked in this position or that position. I mean, can't. So, let us change the link length. So, I will change this to 30 and this to 80 and retest it. And there we go. Now we have a crank again. Here is an interesting question for you. Uh, do you think for Grashoff's criteria to hold good, 